Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to solve a system of equations. Um, one of these happens to be a linear equation and the other one happens to be an ellipse. And so with this, at most we can have two solutions because if I had an ellipse, remember an ellipse is oval shaped. And then we have a line. So at most we can have two points that they would intersect each other. Um, we could have zero solutions to this where they don't intersect at all. We could also have um, we could also have a situation where there's only one solution if the line happens to be tangent to the ellipse. So with this, when you are going through and solving it, you need to know at most how many solutions you could possibly have. And so with this one, what we are going to do is we're going to use substitution. And the reason I can't use elimination on this one is because the first one has an x squared and the second one has just an x term. So I can't get those to eliminate with each other. In order to eliminate one of the variables, um, you do have to be able to cancel out your variables. So because of the fact that that does not work in this case, we are going to use substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the linear equation for x. And I could solve for y, but it's going to be easier to solve for x. So I'm going to solve for x since it has a coefficient of 1. In order to solve for x, what we're going to do is we're going to move everything else to the other side. So we would end up with x equals negative 3y because when the positive 3 goes to the other side it becomes a negative 3. And when the negative 1 moves to the other side it becomes a positive 1. So what we have is x is negative 3y plus 1. So wherever I have an x in the first equation I'm going to replace that x with the expression negative 3y plus 1. So I would put in negative 3y plus 1 squared plus 2y squared minus 3 times negative 3y plus 1 minus 58y plus 68. So now if we look at this, this only has one variable in it. Um, and so we're going to simplify out this expression. Don't forget that this part right here, I see the most mistakes with this part right here. A lot of people want to, when they see this, they want to just put 9y squared plus 1. They just want to square the terms in here. Remember that negative 3y plus 1 squared is equal to negative 3y plus 1 times negative 3y plus 1. So you have to multiply first times first and then the outside. So when you do first times first, you end up squaring the first term, um, which would give us the 9y squared. But then we have an outside term of negative 3y and an inside term of negative 3y. So the middle term is always twice the product of these two. So if I multiply negative 3 times 1, I get negative 3. And then I always end up with two of them because it's going to be the same since I'm squaring it. And then we end up with the last term squared, which would be the positive 1. So don't forget this term right here. This term right here is the biggest mistake I see when squaring a binomial. I'm going to continue to simplify the 2y squared stays the same. I would distribute the negative 3 into the parentheses. So I would have a positive 9y since negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times 1 gives me negative 3. And then I have 58y plus 68 equals 0. I know that this looks very scary. I always look over just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And I noticed that I forgot the y squared here, which would have definitely influenced my answer. So always just kind of check over your work. Um, no matter how many times I do things, I always um, seem to make simple mistakes occasionally. So make sure that you're checking your work. It happens to everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the left-hand side by combining like terms. So I would end up with an 11y squared. Negative 6y plus 9y would give me 3y. And then 3y minus 58 would give me negative 55y. And then if I combine um, my constant terms, I would have 1 minus 3 is negative 2 plus 68 would give me 66 equals 0. And so we end up with a quadratic equation. With this quadratic equation, what we're going to have to do um, is we're going to 
need to simplify this or factor it to see if it's factorable. If not, then you would have to use the quadratic formula. So with this, I can see that all of these numbers are divisible by 11, so I'm gonna just divide everything by 11. And the reason I'm doing that is because it will give me smaller numbers and it'll make it easier to factor. So with this, I would end up with y squared minus 5y plus 6 equals 0 which is a much easier thing to factor than the 11 square y squared minus 55 y plus 66. So what we're going to do, remember when we're factoring, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me six that add up to be the middle number, so negative five. And this part you really don't have to write down, I just want you to know where I'm getting the values from. So those values happen to be, because I need a positive six, that tells me both of them must be negative. So that tells me I would use negative two and negative three. So this breaks down into y minus 2 and y minus 3 equals 0. So we end up with y is equal to 2 or y can also be 3. And with this, I know that we have two solutions, but what we have is remember that we're looking for two ordered pairs. So this is going to be an x order, xy ordered pair and this is going to be a different xy ordered pair. So when we go to find x, what we have to do, and I'm going to use the one, this equation right here, the x equals negative 3y plus 1. And I'm going to take and replace my two values for y so that I can find both of these ordered pairs. So this is a little bit more confusing since it's not just dealing with two lines that happens to be one point. Um, so when y equals 2, we would take and plug it into that equation. So we have x equals negative 3y plus 1. So when y equals 2, we end up with negative 3 times 2 plus 1, which is negative 6 plus 1. So we end up with x equals um, negative 5. So if we write this as an ordered pair, our f first solution would be negative 5 comma 2. And then when y equals 3, we would use the same exact equation. We would still use the same equation. x equals negative 3 times 3 plus 1. And so we end up with x equals negative 8. And so our second solution is negative 8 and y is 3. So this would be the two ordered pairs where these intersect, where the ellipse intersects the circle. Um, to check this one, you would need to plug in wherever you have an x, you would need to plug it in with your x um, variable with the first point and then the corresponding y coordinate in for your y values. Um, I'm going to grab the calculator and show you how to quickly check this by storing features. You don't have to do this, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and store it in. Um, remember that you have to store both X and Y. So the first one was negative eight. I'm going to store for X. And the second one is 3. So when x is negative 8, y is 3. I'm going to store that for y. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in my two equations. I'm going to type in my two original equations to make sure it works. I'm just going to type in x squared plus 2y squared minus 3x minus 58y plus 68 equals 0. So to do that, and you could just plug in these values into your calculator as negative 8. Just make sure that when you're using a negative, make sure that you put it in parentheses. By storing it as a variable, it will automatically put the parentheses where it needs to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the first equation, alpha x squared plus 2 alpha y squared minus... 3x, and make sure that you use your green x, so you have to do the alpha x, minus 58 alpha y, plus 68, and then we just hit enter to see if this equals 0, because it was equal to 0. So we can see that it works in our first equation. The second equation is not quite as long, so we can do the alpha x, plus 3 alpha y, 
minus 1, and we see does this also equal 0? So that was the other equation. So all I did was I simply just put in the two equations. You do have to store your answers. Um, the nice thing about doing this is when we check our second ordered pair, remember our second ordered pair was negative 5 and 2. Um, we can simply just go and store negative 5 for x, and then we can store 2 for y, and then I can just go back up. I can use the up arrow key to grab this equation instead of retyping it and just hit enter. And we can see that that also gives me zero. The x plus 3y isn't as long. It may just be as long um, to type that in. But I can just go up and grab it and hit enter. And we can see that it works in both solutions. So for this one, I did use the TI-84 to help me verify the solution. Um, you could plug it into a calculator. Make sure that when you plug in a squared, like with, um, because you have an x squared term, make sure that if you are plugging it in, that for the x squared that you do put in the negative 5 squared. Um, if you don't put it in this way, this is not equal to negative 5 squared because this one, it's squaring the negative, which is 25. This one does not square it. So make sure you know how your calculator works because these are not equivalent expressions. So if you do plug it in um, without using the store feature, just make sure that you watch for that because if you put it in wrong, it will give you the wrong answer and it will say that it doesn't work even though you had the right answer. So be very, very careful about using your calculator. Um, you could also do hand calculations. It takes a little bit more time, but always check just to make sure that it works out. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.